let's talk about why the standard algorithm for long division actually works. Um, this video will address uh, the sixth grade common core standard that falls in the number system domain. Uh, the, the content cluster is compute fluently with multi-digit numbers and find common factors and multiples. In this particular um, standard, we're addressing this part. We're computing fluently with multi-digit numbers. Uh, the standard says to fluently divide multi-digit numbers using the standard algorithm. Okay. Uh, in this video, we, we, I've actually already done a video where we just simply used the standard algorithm and we were dividing uh, large numbers, you know, multi-digit numbers. In this video, what I'd like to do is take a step back and actually talk about why the standard algorithm actually even works. And what an algorithm is, is uh, it's just basically a formula or a method in which you can solve something in mathematics. Um, the standard algorithm is one that we generally tend to use, uh, especially in the United States. Uh, long division is <laughs> what many students consider to be a very brutal method because generally it's a, it's a method that doesn't really quite make sense. Oftentimes it's taught without um, any kind of understanding as to why the method works or even with building understanding about what really long division is. Um, so what I'd like to do is address that piece. So let's just take some really simple numbers. In sixth grade, we're working with multi-digit numbers. This isn't really an example of multi-digit numbers, but if we can show how this algorithm works with simple numbers, it might make more sense in how it works with larger numbers. So let's take this division problem. 54 divided by 3 equals 18. First of all, what does that mean? It means that if I can take the number 54 and divide it up into three equal parts, and I would get three parts of 18, or three groups of 18. That's one way you can look at it. Okay, so if we were to use the standard algorithm real quickly, we would write the 54 inside this little thing here, <laughs> little symbol, and write the 3 on the outside. And a lot of times when it's written this way, people think of it as how many times does 3 go into 54? But really what that means is how many groups of 3 do we have in 54? So the way the standard algorithm works is that first we will look at this first digit of 54, which is a 5. How many times does 3 go into 5? One time. 1 times 3 equals 3. And then now we subtract. 5 minus 3 is 2. Oops. 2. Because we still have some left over, we need to now bring down the next digit, which is a 4. Now we ask ourselves, how many times does 3 go into 24? And that would be 8 times. Write that digit next to the 1. 8 times 3 is 24. Subtract that, and we get 0. And now that we know that we have 0, we know that we're done. We don't have any more remain. We don't have a remainder, and we don't have any more to divide. So what this answer tells us is, again, like we said up here, there are three groups of 18 in 54. All right, so let's slow that method down just a teeny bit. And now let's look at how it works and why it works. Okay, so again, I'm going to write over here 54. Actually, you know what? I need to give myself space because I think I'm going to show you some stuff on top there. Okay, so I've rewritten the problem. 54 divided by 3 again. Now, when we look at this problem in standard algorithm, we have, we're, we're, we're paying attention to this first digit of 54. And we ask ourselves, how many does three time go three go into five, and and we see that it goes in one time. Now, when we only write the one on top of the five, we're not writing the zeros. And the standard algorithm is basically a shortcut, and it allows us to not write the zeros. But the but it only works if you put the digits as you are computing in the algorithm in the correct locations. And that's why the teachers will get you if you're not writing the digits in the correct location because uh, you won't end up with the right answer. So in other words, I could write a 1 here, but that would be totally incorrect. And the teachers will say, will tell you, tell you it's incorrect. Um, it may not exactly tell you why. So what I'll do is I'll attempt to tell you why. You're writing the 1 above the 5 because what you're really saying is this 5 is actually 50. This 5 is in the tens place of 54. So it means you have 50 units. 
And when you're saying that 3 goes into 50, you're not saying 1 time, you're actually saying 10 times. So you have to put the 1 in the 10's place to signify 10 and not just 1. But we don't write the 0 in the standard algorithm. But I'm going to write it with the 0 just to show you how it works. So what we're really saying here is 3 goes into 50 10 times, and 10 times 3 is 30. And again, that's another 0 we don't write. You see, we didn't write the 0 here. So now we have 30 here, and now we need to subtract, because there's still some left over. When we subtract, we get 54 minus 30, which is 24. Over here, when we subtracted, we did 5 minus 3 is 2, and then we brought down the 4, which is the same thing as subtracting 54 minus 30. So we have 24 here. Now we need to think about how many times is 3 going to 24. That's easy because we know 3 times 8 is 24. But when we write 8, notice that we put 8 here in the 1's place. I'm going to write it on top here. It was 0 10's and 8 1's. 8 times 3 is 24. And now you get 0 again, so we don't go any further. But what we have left up here is 8 1's and 10 1's, or 1 10, either way you can look at it that way. If we were to add these two up, you get 18. So we do get the same answers we get over here, but the key is, and I'll see if I can do this in yellow, we did not write this 0, and instead we moved this 8 down here. We did not write this 0. We did not write this 0. These zeros we did write because it was our final, and it showed where we were ending the problem. Um, so the standard algorithm allows us to not write the zeros. Uh, let's try it with another problem, just slightly differently. Um, okay, so again, the standard al algorithm, I'll do this one in red, is 5 into 125. Can 5 go into 1? No. Can 5 go into 12? Yes. How many times? 2. 2 times 5 is 10. Now I subtract 12 and 10, I get 2. Bring down the 5 because I still have some left over here. It's 25. How many times does 5 go into 25? 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Okay, so that's, and then because that's 0, we're done. So what this tells us is that 125 divided by 5 is 25, or there are 5 groups of 25 in 125. Okay, so in blue, let's break that down and show how it works. And now we'll write the zeros in that we didn't write on this problem over here. So we have 125 divided by 5. Now, when we say, does 5 go into 1, we're not really saying 1, we're really saying 100. How many 5s are there in 100? If I wanted to, I could write that. Um, but instead, what I, what I did is I said, how many 5s are in... 12, which really what I'm asking is how many fives are in 120? So when I wrote the 2, what I didn't write, when I wrote the 2 right here, what I was saying was that there are actually 20 fives in 100. Now if I subtract 125 from 100, I still have 25 left over. Now, I can say how many 5s are there in 25. There are 0 10s and 5 1s, so there are 5 5s in 25. And when I subtract that, I get 0. So now I'm adding up 5 and 20, which gets me 25. That's the same answer that I had up here and that I had over here. So again, the, one, the zeros that I didn't write were here, in this, in, over here in the standard algorithm, the zeros that I did not write are this zero, that zero, this zero, and all the ones I, other ones I did.